Hello Internet! Today my plan is to make the remains of this 4080 Super. I say remains because the sport is cracked and the repair has already failed. What? And solder those remains to the donor board, which is not Super. The board looks identical, so it should work. It's entirely possible. One thing to keep in mind is that since the core is Super, BIOS also has to be Super, so I'll have to swap the BIOS chip in the process. But before I start, I'd like to introduce new thermal camera from TopDon that claims to have the same resolution as my beloved P2 Pro. We're gonna test that! I'm a bit skeptical about this model to be able to deliver exactly what I'm looking for, but trying won't hurt. Inside, we have a nice pouch and, of course, the unit itself, which I'll get back to once it's fully charged. So for now, I'll go ahead and prep the new board for transfer and oh no! The board is so twisted! Twisted? It's not! It's ergonomic design! Instead, I'm gonna have to use my custom made super flat, just like your mama, <laughs> super powerful heat plate that I made myself. Yep, I am that cool. You just didn't know it yet. In any case, this is the twist that we're dealing with here. Special thanks to my donor board supplier. You talk? Me no sell. I'll try to get that fixed by positioning some weights across the perimeter of the board and hope that the middle of the board is flat as well. Why I hope you ask? You'll find out soon enough, so let's get that transplant surgery underway and see just how horrible things can go sometimes. There we have it. The board is as flat as your mama. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go ahead and check for resistances, data lines and all that good stuff and power the board and see what happens. But first, remember the thermal camera? No, it's not going to be my beloved infrared. Instead, today we're going to try this new top down and see how well it stacks up against the competition. First boot took about 11 seconds and we're able to see most of the board that does fit into the view which is good. Judging by the heat signature, the board is powered. But can I see any details? The closer I get to the board, the more out of focus things become. No problem, this bad boy comes with a digital zoom. So now, things that would otherwise be invisible, become twice as invisible. Let's compare the image clarity with the P2 Pro and as you can see, it is not much different. However, the infrared comes with a micro lens and as soon as you pop that on, a whole new world of electronics is revealed. In fact, macro lens makes things so good, you can even see individual pins for this MOSFET. That's incredible. So it seems that the Top Don has lost its battle once again. If Top Don wants to save itself, I highly recommend them to design a macro lens for this camera as quick as possible and either include it or sell it separately 
because macro lens makes a night and day difference. Have a look. I'm trying to use an inferior macro lens for this camera and it seems to work. If this camera had a macro lens, it would smash its competition. But until then, it's not all that great. Either way, the benefit of Top Down is that it does not require a phone, and that's a big plus on its own. Continuing with the repair, let's boot the card and see if it posts. And it does not. Memory chest says we have problems with these two chips. But is it the chips we're having problems with or the core that's not sitting flat? Hard to say. Maybe a cold solder joint. So I lifted the core, took a look around and didn't really see anything. So maybe there was some dirt under the memory chips. Everything looked good until I started removing the solder from the core. And that's when I noticed this. See how this one solder ball is bigger than the rest? Bigger balls will give you bigger FPS. Well, that kind of explains what went wrong, but how and why? Who cares? I'll just go ahead and reball all of that again and see if that helps. Powered on and nothing. Nothing on the HDMI. Nothing on the display port. Thinking maybe we have an issue with the data lines and running the tester showed me that we have two missing connections at the front of the board. Very interesting. Why would two data lines not connect to the core? It is incredibly difficult to see under the core, but it looks like some of the balls are not soldered. This could be caused by oxidized pads or a bulged board, which is often the result of removing the core with the excessive temperatures. Which is often the case for boards I get from this guy. No duck! So I'll lift the core one more time and... Yep. As you can see here, the core is not soldered completely. Both left and right corners are sitting low because the middle is sitting high. I'm gonna have to fix that somehow. Maybe with some weights. In any case, after reballing the core yet another time and verifying the data lines, powering it on again and it has the exact same problem. No detect, no display, and it is your fault. Only if you click the like and post the comment, I'll be able to fix this pile of garbage that keeps failing to detect. But wait, what if the problem is the riser? These risers are always causing weird problems, especially after heat cycles, so let's deoxid the pins Apply some gold guard and try again. And... Still nothing. Okay. No detect is likely caused by the lack of connection at the bottom of the left corner of the GPU die. As proof, the oscillator does not generate anything because it is not connected to the core. The right thing to do at this point, given the circumstances, is to throw it away and move on with our life. I don't have a life, so I'll just... Keep trying again, and who knows, maybe I'll get lucky this time. After trying yet another time, the result is... Well... It's now complaining about the two chips on the top right corner. So I guess that area is also not sitting high enough. At this point, you might be wondering... How many attempts can you go back and forth? And the answer to that is... You fix junk! Me like! Subscribe! You get late. Either way, a few more hours later and I'm ready to try again. And this time, he posted. Special thanks to people in China who cannot remove cores without warping the board, making it nearly non-repairable. And maybe, if they're watching this video, please improve your process somehow. Meanwhile, I'll put this thing together, run some tests, conclude with this card and call it a day. This was enough for me for one night, and there are 13 more of them, exactly like this one. Thank you for watching, hopefully this was entertaining. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and post a comment below to help with the algorithm. Goodbye.